good afternoon friends uh, i hope you all had a good uh, lunch and i know this is the post uh, lunch session but still we have a lot of exciting things uh, in front of you still uh, start off with the uh, address by mr sv shastri um, gmd gms state bank of global market state bank of india and uh, chairman fimda um a brief introduction in spite of his um, request to me to keep it brief <laughs> i'm i'm trying to keep it as brief as possible um sri shastri joined state bank of india as a probationary officer on 1st october 1985 has held various assignments in the bank both in india and abroad he was uh, chief dealer in uh, sbi frankfurt and then uh, chief dealer at sbi london also during his whole career spanning 34 years he has also headed uh, sbi dfhi limited as md and ceo uh, presently he's uh, dmd global markets in state bank of india mumbai and as i said chairman of fimda um, that's i think brief enough <laughs> so shastri sir i request you to please come and uh, good afternoon everyone ladies and gentlemen dr deepak kumar from rbi representatives from market participants organizations fellow colleagues from the industry it's always a pleasure to come back and speak at the fedai meetings or fedai conferences because i have been associated with fedai for quite some time earlier in my role as uh, gm forex i used to be an active participant in the fedai management committee meetings and of course i can see a lot of familiar faces here with whom i had the privilege of interacting in my earlier role today's topic cs we had a good discussion on improving interlinkages of indian financial markets with uh, global markets we are having this conference in the physical form after a gap of almost 2 to 3 years and for obvious reasons the covid induced lockdowns the restrictions on movement but one thing i should compliment each one of us here that the way we have ensured that the business does not suffer or there is minimum disruption to the business we have been able to give the markets and the customers the exporters importers whatever they had wanted or they were asking us for of course ably supported by reserve bank of india in whatever steps they had taken and they have acceded to our request to ensure that orderly conditions persist in the markets now when the customers were not able to come to the bank or send the documents to the offices for either the import transactions or for export transactions we did a work around by asking them to send across digital copies in some cases or during the initial days we said please follow it up subsequently with hard copies duly signed for our record but then as we progressed we also said okay let us do away with the hard copies as well scanned duly signed copies are sufficient so that business continues uninterrupted or with minimum hindrances after having gone through this the customers themselves started asking now that is there a need for us to give all these papers in the physical form rather why not we be encouraged to give the forms in the digital form so that that is what is the topic of the next discussion on digitalization and how the banks and the industry we should take it forward vis-a-vis -vis the customers the exporters and importers and the banks so 
even Dr. Deepak Kumar, I think, would be speaking on the same issues on the way forward as far as digitization is concerned. And we'll all be looking forward to inputs from the participants so that FedEx can help collate this and uh, give it to RBI or share with RBI so that we make it easier for the exporters, importers, and also for us. Like for example, in these days, can we look at e-bill of lading or we can see custom clearances also in the e-form. So these are things which we need to discuss here. We need to come out with ideas. We need to share this with the Reserve Bank of India and then we can take these things forward. I look forward to good and uh, participation from the teams here and also give us inputs so that we can share with the RBI and we take things forward. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak here. Thank you. Uh, I don't know whether the introduction was briefer or the speech was briefer, but that was very brief, I must say. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now I'll just invite Mr. Bala Subramaniam, Union Bank of India, CGM, to give a memento to Mr. Shastri on uh, behalf of FedEx. <laughs> Would you like to add some more words? No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, now we have uh, something that I think will definitely uh, wake away your post lunch uh, siesta. Uh, we uh, invite Mr. Deepak Kumar, Executive Director, Reserve Bank of India. Uh, Dr. Deepak Kumar is, uh, is Reserve, uh, ED Reserve Bank of India. Prior to this, he was heading the Department of Information Technology. As Executive Director, Dr. Kumar is looking after Foreign Exchange Department, FED, Department of Communication and Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation. He has experience of more than three decades working in central office and four regional offices across the spectrum of central banking. He's also a director on the board of uh, Indian Overseas Bank and several other entities. Dr. Kumar is a postgraduate in economics and has obtained PhD on the subject impact of computerization on banking industry during 90s in evaluation. He has done a postgraduate diploma in international marketing from Delhi School of Economics and CIB from my uh, Dr. Deepak Kumar, please. Good afternoon. Sri HK Jaina. Managing Director, CCIL, Sri Sastri, Chairman FIMDA and DMD SBI, Sri RK Sinaji, Chairman FIMDA, FEDAI and CGM uh, SBI, Sri Aswani Sindhavani, Chief Executive Officer, <clears throat> FEDAI. It is, in, it is indeed an honor for me to be here at annual conference of FEDAI at beautiful location of Ambi Valley City. Maybe the first planned hill city in post-independent India. Foreign Exchange Dealer Association, FEDAI, does not need any introduction because its work and function spread through a starting from making guidelines and rules for forex business, training, accreditation, advising assistance, member banks, and represent member bank to the government and regulators.
for integrates for different regulatory matter due to continuing integration of global financial market and increased pace of deregulation the low role of self regulatory organization like fedi has increased substantially and they play a catalytic role in a smooth conduct of forex business i am grateful to the fedi for extending this opportunity to me to interact and the subject chosen today nothing can be more important today than first panel discussion on interlinkages of inter indian financial market with global market why it is important today much more because of ifsca which is being launched by and being developed or evolution is taking place to bring this integration much more swift if i say so then second topic for panel discussion changing dynamics of international trade with rapid digitalization again we say that we are in fourth industrial revolution and this fourth industrial revolution is driven by the technology for that matter all the earlier three industrial revolution has been triggered by some technological innovation but technology was different this time technology is based on zero and one so based on zero and one how it is changing our behavior and what is the behavior of the consumer what is ex their expectation what is their demand so that we have to look for and it's a nice platform to discuss that demand availability of infrastructure availability of technical skills and willingness to adopt and absorb the technology emerging technologies so i will just start with this presentation and give a brief on journey so far next slide please yeah various for our various people everybody almost concerned with the subject has appreciated that post independence era particularly last 20 years our calibrated and gradual approach towards opening of capital account by liberalizing the flows in an hierarchical manner has given us required stability and impetus for greater inter integration with the global market this fcac or cfm fcac fuller capital account convertibility or capital flow management what should be the way forward because imf has defined current account convertibility but capital account convertibility has not been defined by any fora and post gfc imf has also started talking about capital flow management rather than capital account convertibility because earlier panel discussion also the this word was used a uh, few times and uh, it was also clarified someone in the panel that we are capital account convertibility for convertible for the required direction i will not say amount because there is amount but direction for capital account convertibility is well defined since fema why i say since fema because there we have clearly identified the priorities of flow from non debt creating fdi fei to debt creating ecb another thing that in 2004 that lrs came for individual and we used to say those days 
that now we are capital account convertible, convertible for individual at least up to 25,000 USD. In 2004, February, we are started with 25,000 USD. So in that perspective today also, even in capital account, wherever is the requirement of the industry, not only individual, of the industry and entity, there is not much request for enhancing any of the limit, whatever has been fixed due to macro level, to manage the macro level aggregates. Why it is important? Because it's important to balance diverse objectives, active management of various types of capital flow, to manage the composition as well as surge or stop. And we have managed successfully, rather we can say, without putting any micro level instruments. When I say like during GFC and thereafter, Tobin tax and other things have been used by other countries, but we could manage without that because that we felt that it's a regressive stage. Agenda for next stage, next decade, we have to set because FEMA has also lived for 22 years. And if you see the history, be it FEDA or different version, their age used to be 25 to 27 years. So we have to start thinking which way we have to go and how we should go. The path has to be defined and we have to start that now. Because why I say now it's very important because of one, this pandemic has created new way of learning, new way of supply chain management, new way of managing the demand and expectation of the people. And be it technology, be it monetary policy, India could do it very successfully. So that is time when this equilibrium globally has been disturbed by this pandemic. In this disturbed equilibrium, when new normal or new equilibrium is established or achieved, that time Indian role should be higher. We should not miss the bus now because we have all the infrastructure and willingness to lead the world now. So use of granular transaction based data to monitor the exception and approval framework beyond the tolerance macro level limit for type of flows to direct them in the sector as per priority capacity to absorb and in sync with other macroeconomic policy. What primarily uh, I'm trying to say here that today also capital account, there are a lot of regulations, master direction and all that. Is it right time or is it right time to start looking that and make it more granular, manage this through granular transaction based data. That means consolidation, simplification, rationalization of capital flow management. How can we make it data driven? Because if we have granular data, we can manage it much more effectively. We can see the undercurrent through the new tools of be it AML or neuro-linguistic programming or other emerging technologies, which can say that what is the interplay between different variable in the economy and how it can be done. Next slide, please. So in digital solution, if we set the priorities, let us see where we are today. And this we have divided into three stages, digitization, digitalization, and then digital transformation. If we say so, digitization, that is digitize information 
and organize information part in cross border transaction be it current or capital i think we have adequate success automation of process a streamlining the process that also it has been tried and it has been achieved a bit but we have to work a lot there for digitalization digital transformation is the ultimate goal for next decade where the policy formulation decision making all this should be driven by data not by submission reporting and all that if i give a brief just uh, you can say it's a dream it's nothing on paper like if we have all the data relate, related to all inflow outflow there we can see analyze and based on exception only wherever intervention is required can we manage through that the direction of flow whichever area whether non debt creating debt creating fdi fpi again can be managed through direction of flow which is within the comfort zone which is going out of comfort zone so that would be the future how fast and how far we can achieve that the digital transformation journey its a time has to tell only and here what we next slide what we are aiming for i will take this from idpms and edpms point of view because at least there multiple agencies has been brought on one single platform single view of data is available so single view of data when i say it's uh, for exporter customs and importers in between the shippers ports warehousing finance this four element is not at not as yet on the edpms idpms platform is delayed why it is delayed though we are ready for that because of the absorption capacity when i say that absorption capacity is a complete ecosystem exporter importer banker and other support agencies in the international trade transaction like warehousing shippers ports but for the limited purpose we wanted to use some ai ml also and do away with export master direction or import master direction and everything should be managed through data but uh, first uh, jolt we got, got only when this caution listing has started through edpms still we have to roll back so that's why i said that absorption capacity we have to increase because it will make the life easier for everyone like bill of entry used to be a big thing submission of third party exchange control copy of bill of entry that also was dispensed with and now it's available in soft copy and automatically on idpms there are also outstanding bill of entry that also there are reasons because full ecosystem is not ready to accept that but we have to move we have to drive our way to get that but today we are not aiming for that only we are aiming for paperless trade system and paperless trade system today only aswani uh, sinwani sir was showing how the world has arrived and decided for each component what should be the standard and global standard if it is set it's not essential some global agency should do that we should start with baby steps small steps start doing like uh, for domestic if we are starting e way bill for uh, uh, export import also we can start e bill of lading 
again, there this format is there, how the data should be exchanged, there this thing is there. So shippers, ports can very well be onboarded. Warehousing in onboarding can be done when we integrate with e-way bill of the domestic thing. Finance. Finance data also we wanted to drive through EDPMS, IDPMS, be it hedging, hedging on net basis because all data for a particular exporter importer is available there. How much is export, how much is import, how much one should hedge. And again, without any documentation, whatever is due and eligible for hedging can be done through EDPMS, IDPMS. Next slide, please. So what is required if we move towards paperless international trade? These are the requirements. Recognition of electronic documents and signatures. As Sasris, I was telling that the pandemic has shown us a way. Signed and scanned copy is acceptable. Though as per negotiable instrument acts, most places paper form is required. But today we have just signed physically or signed it digitally. It can be acceptable. So if digitally signed paper is submitted, it can be accepted. And if those papers rise through custom ice gate comes to EDPMS, IDPMS, whether we are ready to process in that. And again, it's not difficult. Technologically, it's simple. Intergovernmental coordination mechanism, that is very, very difficult. And why I'm added to very, very, because of the current geopolitical situation. Because these financial infrastructure should not be weaponized for whatever way it should be uh, to be used against anyone or this. So this uh, going forward, intergovernmental coordination mechanism, again, it will become instead of multilateral, more and multiple bilateral, instead of multilateral. So from that point of view, if we move, we can set our standards for different documents and we can move making it neutral, technologically neutral and interoperable. When I say technologically neutral, what does it mean? Because there are open source and open source a structure of documents, open source structure of validating and all that. How far we can use that? Because again, it's not very easy to adopt that. Trade financing, digitalization will again close the finance gap through greater transparency. And today that KYC identification is again a major challenge. Digitalization will address that to a great extent. A standard development, the global digital identity, Jena Saab team has explained that, LEI and this standards they are using. And it's a very good, not only for current account, but capital account, because capital account, how the hierarchy of the entity, their subsidiary, step down subsidiary, that identification will help a lot. And that is the actual LEI function, not the KYC. So in capital flow management, this will play a very great role. Now integration with KYC, again, uh, CCIL is also saying that. A standards development, this will facilitate this. Software components will assure authenticity of document by digital signature, DLS encryption or different type of encryption, provenance of document origin. So from where the document had originated and from where and which path it has moved, starting with bill of flooding, Port of origin, transshipment, mid shipment. 
all these things can be done. What's next? This is very important because unless and until all in stakeholders in the trade ecosystems are engaged, not only for their adoption, because they will adopt only when their operational challenges are taken care of. We have to get the buy-in from the real operational people because they will only be able to tell the challenges. Technology will give a medium, but it's a means, not an end. So we have to very well recognize that and assess gaps, capacity building, proof of concept, share stories of secure buy-in. So that's the next challenging part, next thing. Very briefly, digitalization to digital transformation when we have to move, at least we have to take from this uh, three layer way and we are saying, I'm not talking about seven layers of computer thing, OSI, but at least here also we have taken the jargon of that uh, technology, physical layer, logical layer and content layer. But it's a reverse, physical layer in technology is just wiring. But here we are saying network, hardware, all device connected. So across the globe, again, it has to be same. So this physical layer, how we can bring semblance that any hardware if it's used, it should be read, accepted by the other things. Logical layers, then content layer. Messaging and network level is very important. Why? Swift. Again, it's uh, today it's uh, discussed and referred in any pink paper maximum. Why it's so difficult and there's a swift ban, it's again ultimate weapon. But technologically, I don't think it's uh, impossible to get alternative of swift. And we have to start thinking of that, Parliamentary Committee on Data Protection in uh, November 21, before this geopolitical disturbance itself, they have emphasized the need for local SWIFT. Just I will briefly touch, because just like the break that thing, that what SWIFT is, everybody knows that, but just for future thing, how to break and how to make it simplify that in a simple word, like Swift consists of two components primarily. One is message, financial message, another is network. Financial message, we know what all are the data points, in what format it should be. We can write, type all those data points in Excel file, which will be understandable for others also, be it MTD, whatever series it is, data point is known. You can attach document also there, convert it into XML. You have a file. Now you transfer to other bank. So P2P, I can say that, and I have told this uh, technology team, that P2P alternative for Swift can be developed in a day. When you want to make it accessible to group to group, then there are challenges, but there also technology is available. You host your private website, make it accessible with secured tunnel, with all this security and all that. Again, that can be data can be transferred. When data is in XML, again, it can be consumed by the other side, be it origin, be it destination, and it can be, be consumed with the existing system. I have made it presented as in a very simple manner, though it's not so simple. But if we start that the thing is simple, we can really achieve that. Just the last slide. And it's uh, philosophical synthesis here. Two faces are there. And then synthesize what EDPMS, IDPMS, ICE gate, EWA bill. 
what do you do that to synthesis of all this system few system what we can accommodate in this particular thing to build and nurture futuristic technology what is the futuristic technology is behavioral analysis and conversational ai when i say conversational ai it's again it's a jargon nothing else just artificial intelligence everybody in, be it human be it computer it's a intelligence based on certain data they interpret and consolidate so conversational ai just like within the team of any working team we converse okay you do this you do that i will do this way conversational ai that translates into zero and one and tells the people and that can make the working in a group very simple for the digital rule on digital trade transaction this three our arching set of rules other rule book should coexist at least in beginning and going forward also based on new experiences other rule book must coexist and what actually this will do uniform rule on digital trade transaction eliminate the duplicate and repetitive clauses from proprietary rule books and standardize the documents so that it can be read accepted and consumed by other party thank you thank you very much sir for that uh, elaborate exhaustive i'm really worried about the next panelists what they are going to cover <laughs> no it was it was really wonderful before you leave the stage i would like to request uh, mr madhu bandarkar to please hand over a memento to dr deepak kumar please Thank you, sir.